Hey guys, John here, and welcome to a special side series of NASCAR 06. Today, we are going to be starting a fantasy season. So basically how this works is I have picked all of the tracks that the Cup Series normally does not run at, be they fantasy tracks or, in a couple of cases, tracks that the other series run at but Cup does not, and I've made a 15 race schedule out of it for a season mode run. And I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be really neat. I think it's a cool idea. I don't know how many people have done similar things, but I mean, you know, obviously it's YouTube, so somebody's done it before. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I have chosen to honor a driver who is no longer with us. I will be driving as Jason Leffler. I feel like he was a guy who never really got a fair shake of things, and obviously his life was ended far too soon. So I think it would be really awesome to try to win this fantasy championship with Jason Leffler. I probably won't be utilizing the total team control aspect too much. Uh, I will in, in you know certain circumstances or whatever, but typically we're going to focus on the race at hand. All right, so let's run over the schedule here really, really quickly. You can see the first five here. I will name off the rest of them or show it on screen as a list or both or whatever. But we're kicking the season off at the Daytona Road Course, the track that, you know, Rolex and such things run at. And then we'll be following that with Dodge, New York, Nazareth, Phoenix Enfield, Mr. Clean, Dockside, IRP, Talladega Enfield, UPS, Devil's Canyon, Texas Enfield, Levi Strauss, Old Spice, and Speedway Boulevard is the finale. You might wonder why that. Because this way, Daytona is at the top and bottom of the list. We start at Daytona, and we end, well, technically just outside of Daytona. <laughs> the Speedway Boulevard road course takes place basically on the streets right outside the track. So I thought that would be a cool way to do it. And yeah, those are our 15 races and we're gonna be kicking things off, as I said, at the Daytona Road Course. Legend difficulty, limited assists, pitting. It's gonna be a thing, <laughs> but let's do this. All right, this is going to take some getting used to, but let's see how we qualify here at the Daytona Road Course. I have to uh, learn these tracks. And some of them, you know, get to play as uh, in throughout, like, career mode and stuff, but some of them you don't. In fact, I haven't raced at this one in a long time. I guess occasionally they crop up uh, for the uh, showdowns. I don't know if this one does actually, come to think of it. But it's been a long time, I know that, since I've been here, so. Really gotta kinda like remember what I'm doing here. Feeling it out. Try not to let the car step out on me. So far showing the pole, and it did feel good. Good lap. Like we're gonna win the pole. That is unexpected. That is unexpected. All right, we are gonna be one and done. Look at that, sharing the front row with our teammate Tony Stewart, or their teammate Bobby Labonte is sixth. This is going to be pretty darn interesting, if I do say so myself. Ooh, let's do this. Ooh, gonna be 
careful here on this start. I just might let uh, my teammates go. There we go. I may not be working super hard to do the whole total team control thing for this particular series, but I'm going to try my best not to cause my teammates any grief. At all possible. So far, so good. Oh man, this is gonna be a lot of fun, though. I think this is a great idea for for a series, and I hope that you guys think so as well. I just realized it's gonna be interesting because we're gonna have to do pit stops. <laughs> That's going to be a thing. Uh, also, I'm probably only going to be doing one race per episode. Now, I know that's going to take a while to make progress. Uh, basically, it'll be a 15 episode series. But, uh, because of the fact that I'm already playing this game... Okay, did not get into him. That was close. Uh, because I'm already playing this game on my other channel, trying to get through that uh, career mode, and oh my gosh, Biffle just almost flipped his car, and yet he's just fine. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I don't want to commit to doing long recording sessions of this as well because then I will basically just be recording NASCAR 6 all week long and nothing else. Uh, can we clear him? Can we clear him? Yes. Can we keep it? Probably. I'm not sure how good the AI are here, honestly. I think my real challenge is going to be... Oh, he just hit the wall coming out last turn. My real challenge here is probably going to be not, you know, messing up, and then the whole pit road situation. But, uh, either way, yeah, um, I may still employ some editing, like, this, these, these races are gonna be pretty long, you know, 25% cup race, and then it's a road course, I know the short track ones will probably go by a lot faster, but, these episodes could end up being long if I didn't do some editing. Um, but, for now, I'm not too worried about that. Basically, I just wanted a fun little side series, something I'd never tried before, really. And, uh, hopefully something unique enough to interest new viewers as well as all of you guys. So, yeah. Plus, I figured it was a good way to get this game back on this channel. Um, since, you know, all the racing stuff is going to be back on here going forward. And if you missed the update video as to why that is, basically, just to, to summarize it, I originally thought it would be better to not saturate this channel with racing videos uh, as well as all the other stuff I was doing. Plus, I have to admit, part of me gets a little annoyed when, you know, people ask for just one thing. Like if I put up a Minecraft video or a Zelda video and somebody's like, where's NASCAR? It's like, eh. NASCAR is when it, when it, it'll be up when it's up. Just enjoy this video. But, you know, that's that's just a nitpicky thing on my part, you know. Just because people are excited about something, you know, doesn't mean I have to be, you know, grumpy about it. Um, also, uh, the other big thing is uh, my network kind of got all weird. Uh, basically, I had a separate network for my side channels than the one I have on this one because I needed a network that had lower joining requirements for those because they're smaller channels. Um, and then the, the network I was with was really cool, but they got like absorbed by somebody else. And it's kind of unsure like where I stand with that. 
um, if those videos are even going to be, you know, monetized, what sort of a cut there's going to be. The whole thing has been kind of weird, and I'm still trying to, like, get in touch with the right people to figure out what's going on. But, honestly, going forward, I think I just want to focus on, you know, a smaller number of channels, uh, keep the content uh, consistent, and, you know, whether I'm playing NASCAR or some other racing game going forward, you know, it's just going to be one of the things that I'm doing and not, like, the whole focus. And if people, you know, are only here for one thing, I mean, that's fine. Chances are those that are here for the racing might see one of the other videos and actually enjoy it. So, in the end, it's probably a good idea uh, for that. And I know some people are going to say, why did you do it at all? But like I said, I had this thought that if I put up a NASCAR video and, you know, a Minecraft video or whatever all in the same day, that it was just like so much going on, like over, oversaturated. But I've kind of changed my mind on that a little bit simply because I think it'll be a better balance all in all for for everyone so plus it, it, you know if, if you the viewer ever feels like oh there's too much stuff to watch I mean you don't have to watch it the day it comes out that's the beauty of YouTube it's just there you know you can go back and watch it whenever so <laughs> anyway I've jabbered on a bit here and built up a pretty large lead uh, because I am running some very very good laps and amazingly not messing up. I thought I w would maybe not remember this course very well, and yet I've I've done uh, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of of getting the feel for it back very quickly. So, and remember, I'm on legend difficulty now. Granted, as I said, I'm not sure how good the AI are programmed for these places. They're probably a little slower. But, I don't know. Either way, i um, probably going to employ a little bit of editing now. Um, and uh, get a little closer to figuring out when we're going to get pit stops on the go. Whoa, hello. A little glitchiness there. But yeah, figure out when we're going to get uh, our pit stops on the go. Alright guys, we're getting a little low on fuel, uh, but I want to wait until lap 18, basically the halfway point I guess, uh, before we hit pit road. Some other people have already pitted though, so yeah. Just trying to run good laps. Uh, made a couple little errors, but like nothing costly, you know? Got up on a curb too much, swung out a little wide. Otherwise, very, very easy going. And, uh, I'm really happy with the overall performance here because, I mean, we have a huge lead. But, um, just in general, I was afraid. I was like, I'm biting off more than I can chew with these road courses, but uh, at the very least, this one I am uh, pretty good at. Some of the uh, some of the fantasy ones I'm a little concerned about. Well, especially the ones you don't really go to very much or at all. Um, I vaguely remember. I think it's called Dockside is is one of the ones, and I um. I vaguely remember running that one just for fun sometimes, so I think I, I enjoyed that one. I know that, like, the... Oh, we're going too wide there. Um, the one called Devil's Canyon I was not good at, if I recall. So I'm not super looking forward to that, but eh. We will muddle through.
get ourselves on the pit road here. Okay, little, little maybe a little slow on entry, but I think we're alright. Yeah, we are gonna have to be careful here. There's a lot of people a lot of people haven't pitted. We don't want to get into an incident, bring out a caution or anything like that. Also to be careful when they do start hitting pit roads, they'll probably get a bit jumbled up since it looks like a lot of them are waiting later in the run. But we should be good on fuel from here and didn't really have much in the way of tire wear, so I think we're going to be good. Gonna be real careful here. I haven't had to deal with a lot of traffic yet, so this is this is uh, scary. I swung out a little too wide there. Uh, people, people still not pitting. A couple people pitted, I guess, but. Oh, diving off late. There you go. Got to watch out for that for sure. And watch out for people exiting as well. Um, yeah, Stewart still leading. Has not pitted. I think Bobby was second. We were running one, two, three, I think. Biffle somewhere around there with us. But... Um, Oh, DJ, I'm not trying to do this to you, but you're a little, little slow, buddy. A little slow. Um, it'd be cool if we could finish one, two, three with our te our teammates, you know. But uh, obviously, just want to make sure we're gonna get back around the lead, which we should. We had a huge lead and a good pit stop. Okay, leaders are pitting, which means the rest of these guys probably will as well. I'm going to actually try to stay to the outside here. See if they can do that. Not everybody did. Vickers did. Hey, Terry, let's draft a bit. Okay. I think the biggest thing is that I can just outbreak these guys by so much. Which you would think would be hard on the tires, but so far it's not. That glitch thing can stop, please. <laughs> Alright, so Biffle didn't pit. He's leading. But our teammates did. We'll see where we come out along with them, I suppose. Hopefully it will be one, two, three again, but guess we'll find out. Okay. Should be the last of people pitting, I would assume. Looks like everybody. I will... We assume the lead, I think, right there. We'll see how big our lead is, and I'm going to assume it's going to be a lead over our teammates, unless they got shuffled out or bad pit stop or something. Right now, we have an 11.3 second lead. It was like 10-something when we pitted. Well, yeah, I think so. Something like that. We actually gain time in the exchange. That's pretty cool. But yeah. Normally I would be like, well, let's edit ahead again. But I don't want this video to be like that short. <laughs> Plus, I think you guys are going to enjoy getting to see these tracks that just don't get much attention. So I'm not going to cut out too much. Cutting out that stretch leading up to the pit stop, you know, is fine. But... I don't want to deprive you guys a chance to actually see these tracks in action, which is the whole point of doing them, is they don't, you know, get seen very much, so, yeah. Um, one thing that I was going to talk about is the impending NASCAR season. It is 
very nearly upon us. Uh, some of you may have heard me mention this in a stream or something here and there, but um, my overall love of the sport of NASCAR in the real world, <laughs> um, my love has waned for it. And the reason for that is the politics of it, the uh, the the sponsors driving who has a job and who doesn't, the the whole reasoning behind why some people have sponsorship and not others, and just in general the lack of I guess variety in the sport because there's just they don't let anybody do anything anymore really like crew chiefs can't tweak the cars try something unique and, and gain time because it's gonna you know get a penalty for them and etc um, just the more strict it became the the more follow the leader it, it has become now don't get me wrong I was super happy that Truex won um, this past year because he's deserved it he deserved it this year he's deserved it before uh, it was great to see all his hard work pay off and so I was super happy about that but in general the year itself as far as racing went wasn't great and then there was the whole situation with Matt Kenseth, which I think was kind of the, the straw that, that broke the camel's back for me. Um, I, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I was like the biggest Matt Kenseth fan of all time. I just felt like he was treated very poorly for a champion and winner and a guy who could still compete for championships. Um, basically being forced out of a ride and basically into retirement is just trash in my opinion um, and so things like that have definitely gone on, on my nerves and just in general whoop hey now whoa save it okay um, in general so many people have retired recent years uh, that I watched for so long that there's just not a lot of people left for me to pull for um, I mean, I'm definitely still a Truex fan, but I just don't know if it's enough to make me tune in every week. So basically, what I'm getting at is I am um, considering not watching this series closely this year. Um, I'm probably going to watch Daytona and maybe some of the other big ones, but I can't see myself caring week to week. Uh, that that interest has, has definitely dropped off a lot over the past few years in general. Um, basically, I usually DVR the races so I can skip through commercials and cautions and things like that. Um, and then I just found myself buzzing through, you know, a lot of green flag racing as well, where I'm just like, all right, let's let's skip on ahead and see what what might happen and. I realized over time that that was just an overall lack of interest. I used to be glued to it, you know, every lap was important and now it's like, eh, whatever. Um, which is funny because I'm still playing NASCAR video games. Um, <laughs> but you might notice my affinity for older ones, a bit of nostalgia for me. I, I, I miss, I miss this era <laughs> really. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of difficult. Um, I don't know. Will that change over time? Maybe, but I, I just don't have that many people that I care about anymore. And, you know, I'm sure plenty of you are big fans of the younger crowd that have come in, but just not that many that I'm that enthused about, you know? Like, take, take the... Uh, the guys coming in for this season, William Byron and Alex Bowman. I just, I don't care. <laughs> you know? William Byron is just the next Casey Kane, in my opinion. He's going to be exciting to watch for a bit, and then he'll either... He might live up to the hype, but I have a feeling that maybe he's going to get overhyped, just like Casey. Um, and Alex Bowman, I just don't understand why... 
he was the choice. Like, I get that he filled in for a few races, I get that he has promise, but the guy never even ran a full nationwide schedule. I mean, just like, put him in there, or nationwide, sorry, Xfinity, put him in there for a whole year, let him, let him run for a championship, let him learn, and uh, then think about it. Like, they could have had Kenseth for, for one, two years in that car, who could have done great things, and then had Bowman in, or, or whatever, but I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm kind of just to the point where, you know, a lot of people make excuses for things like that, like, oh, you know, you got to look at it differently, or, or, oh, they did earn it this way or that way, and it's like, it's just not the same for me, you know? It's just not the same. I also miss the days when, you know, outside of dodging the big one, <laughs> at a plate race there were chances that a underfunded team could still get the right setup on their car and and you know compete for a win um somebody might you know go to darlington or, or martinsville or something and just be really fast and and you just don't expect it out of them and it's like nowadays that's not really going to happen you might see the occasional oddball winner from fuel mileage or um you know, like I said, dodging a big wreck, but realistically, you're not. Um, it's going to be the same handful of guys every time, which is kind of depressing. Um, and then you've got the guys out there who just don't think of really deserve the opportunities that they've got and continue to get. So... When somebody really good or somebody I like, you know, gets the axe or gets forced to retire or whatever, it's hard to swallow, basically. Um, anyway, that was a guessing at half, yeah. So, we're basically six, seven, yeah, six laps away, six and a quarter, whatever laps away. <clears throat> from the end and I'm pretty sure we can go at least nine laps on half a tank of gas so we're fine there we have a 16 and a half second lead casually as I jammer on about stuff um but yeah so hopefully you guys aren't gonna like be upset that I'm not that interested in IRL NASCAR right now, but <laughs> like I said, IRL made me think of indie racing. Like I meant in real life, but yeah. Uh, anyway, because I know a lot of you would be like, "Hey, you see the race? Let's talk about it." You know, like during a stream, and I may not always have any thoughts on it because I may not have watched it this season. Um, so hopefully that isn't too much of a letdown, but. I just, me personally, when I think about the time I need to spend to do it, worrying about spoiling it, trying to avoid things so that I can see the end without knowing who won, etc. Um, having that pressure off is, is going to be nice because I'm busy. I'm only going to get busier realistically this year. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's just one thing that I'm not super concerned about. And, and actually... Kind of related to that um some of you might know that you know i've been a big wwe fan but for the past several months i haven't been keeping up with it i got behind on on watching the weekly shows i was dvring those as well and i got so far behind that i was having trouble catching up by the time the monthly pay-per-view would roll our twice monthly pay-per-view now and so i was like well i'll just catch up next chance I get, but I never did. And then I kind of got to this point where I was like, I'm so far behind now that there's really no point. So I just kind of started reading up on it. And I watched one or two of the pay-per-views without having watched the shows leading up to it. Um, and now I'm kind of at this point where I don't know when I'm going to dive back in. But... Um, I'm probably not going to do it the same way. One thing that is going to help, though, is that I uh, I have Hulu these days. 
and Hulu actually has Raw and SmackDown on it. Well, NXT as well. Hey, that was our best lap. Nice. Can't believe we ran our best lap this late in the race. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the uh, uh, the regular episodes are on there, and that's going to make it easier for me to watch them because, um, for example, if I'm watching it the regular way, like with my satellite TV, uh, that's hooked up in my office, so I have to actually sit in my office chair to watch like three hours of Monday Night Raw. And I'm already sitting in my office chair all freaking day, so I don't really want to do that, you know? Um, so, with it being on Hulu, I can watch it on my laptop, like in bed before I go to sleep. So, hopefully I'm going to be able to catch up on all that. Or at least start watching it, not catch up, but like start watching it again and stay current with it. As we get toward, you know, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, all that stuff, like, I want to be watching. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a little different. Um, but with NASCAR, I just don't have that ambition to be glued to it this time. And I have so many less people that I care about out there um, to watch. And sure, like I said, I'm still going to be a Truex fan, but like, he got that championship, so I kind of feel like that urgent need to, to watch and support is, is not really there for me now. It's like, okay, you did the thing. I, I can leave in peace now. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's rough, you know. Watched it for uh, 17 straight years without missing a race basically and uh it's gonna be weird to to skip a few here and there and 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 all that but i i think it's just the way it has to be for now and you might be thinking like did i replace it with some other interest but i didn't um i don't really watch much tv at all these days watch football occasionally but i don't go out of my way to do it um, and there other sports, not, not really any, so, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a thing, <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get off that topic, I feel like I went on about that for a while, another thing I wanted to say is, it's fine, we have enough fuel, in regards to other, uh, racing games that might be coming, um, I have actually recorded the first episode of One Such Thing, and I'm working on uh, getting prepared for another such thing. I don't know if I want to spoil it, though. <laughs> uh, but I have a lot of different things that I'm going to be doing, and uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, also, uh, once the N64 Mario Kart playthrough is done uh, all the future ones in that thing I did where I said I was going to play through all the Mario Karts um, that's going to be done um, on this channel so yeah that's another thing that'll be mixed in is me playing through some old Mario Karts um, so yeah that'll be fun I finally got some tire wear. That's the first bit of it I think I've had the entire race. It's amazing how well they've held up during this race. But uh, either way, we're bringing it around the last turn for the last time out onto the front stretch of the super speedway. And uh, we're leading by 20 seconds. I don't know who's second and third, but we're about to find out. Jason Leffler wins the opening race of the Fantasy Cup. Burn it down. Come on now, give me that good smoke. Give me that good smoke. Give me that good smoke. Come on. You know you want to give me that good smoke. What are you doing? Game. 
Why does it do that sometimes? Why are you so stingy with the good smoke? Well, fine then. <laughs> Alright, let's see where our teammates ended up. Oh, Labani fell to fourth. Or maybe he was always fourth. I don't know. But uh, let's look at the full results here. We have 31 of 35 laps led. If a led one, Stewart led two. Labani ended up fourth with no laps led. The rest of these guys here real quick so we can keep track of who might be running well on the points and what have you. And uh, yeah, interesting, interesting. All right, well, let's move on. All right, let's take a look at this here real quick. These point standings obviously reflecting how the race played out, but pretty interesting nonetheless. We will see how things go from here on out. That was an easy win for us. Will they always be easy? Probably not. I know I'm going to struggle at some of these, so we'll see how that goes. Be curious to see which AI drivers step up at which tracks. But uh, so far, Joe Gibbs Racing doing quite well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty darn cool. And next episode, we will be heading to Dodge Raceway, which is a very small short track, which is going to be exciting to say the least so thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed hammer that like button share with your friends subscribe for new to join the wolf pack and i will see you next time for more bye Just shut up.